Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're playing a little bit of Dreadnought. Now, Dreadnought is currently in a closed sort of beta stage, so you can't get your hands on it just yet. But at the same time, I thought I'd show you a little bit of a gameplay from one of my favourite ships in it at the moment. Not this one quite here, but I thought first off I'll just show you through the different classes of ships. So first up we have the Destroyer, that is both a heavy damage and heavy armour with an average sort of speed. But next up we have the Dreadnought. Now by the name of Dreadnought you'd expect it to take a lot of damage. So you can see at the bottom left we've got heavy armour, but it's a very slow ship. At the same time this thing can give it out. It's got heavy plasma cannons, repeater cannons, and then you've got a different number of modules as well but if we actually switch one along we'll move to the trader Valcor. that this is a corvette based ship and the one you're going to see me using in the majority of the footage very fast very agile but at the same time it is like a glass elevator this thing will not take much damage but you can give it out and that's why i like it now moving on to the next ship we have ourselves the artillery cruiser almost a sniper of space you could say it is very lightly armored but it can dish out a very long range and accurate payload of fire so let's have a look at some of these modules we've got a heavy tesla cannon look at the range on that good damage we've also got flak turrets for close range if them corvettes decide to sneak up on it we've also got a few different features there so we'll just switch to the last one this is the tactical cruiser the tactical cruiser is kind of like the medic this will keep the other ships in the action but it is an absolute crucial role without this the rest of the fleet will falter so we'll hop back to the corvette the ship that i'm using in the majority of this footage today and i'll just show you some of the features so we've got dual auto cannons at the front now the only problem with these dual auto cannons is they have a very limited arc of fire at the front so you have to face your target we've got the beam turrets that do a lot more damage you can see compared to the damage of the auto cannons but they are quite close range we've got a medium cloak so we can go invisible and stealth up we've got heavy torpedoes that do a lot of damage but we have to be very close to the target we've got a missile pulse now the missile pulse basically sends out a pulse for any projectiles that are tracking onto our ship and it'll destroy them within let me just see what the range is radius 1200 meters so that's pretty good and we've also got the afterburner so we can get out of trouble as fast as we get into it so let's jump straight into the action now the first thing i want to say is i am not the best corvette pilot but on the other hand i do like to apply some very sneaky tactics to take out my prey and my first target here is going to be their healer, their tactical cruiser. You can see that green beam is actually healing them two ships up. I'm going to approach very quietly, launch my torpedoes, take him out. And then before the rest of the fleet spot me, I'm going to get out of the area. And this is going to allow our team to do maximum amount of damage without them ships being healed back up. So now that ship's dead, I've got a secondary target. Something that the Corvette is perfect for destroying. A ship that is out there by itself. Now, it's going to be easy prey for me, this artillery cruiser. It's not going to be able to escape once I creep up on it. But at the same time, it's doing a lot of damage to our teammates. So I need to creep up, make sure my rockets are ready, use a little bit of boost to get there a little bit faster, and then enable my extreme damage module. That's what that skull is on the right. And that separates it from a separate power source. And I'm doing increased damage to the artillery cruiser. With that out of the way... We've actually split the whole of the enemy fleet up and my larger ships are doing a lot of damage because there is no healer to actually help them up. You can see that they've just been completely obliterated behind us by our fellow teammates. Now once again, we have another ship here, no healer on standby, so another very vulnerable target. But then all of a sudden, the healer decides to jump in. You can see that little portal opening on the right there and there goes the healer. Now the healer needs to be eliminated once again very fast. So I'm launching my torpedoes, focusing all fire. Now the larger ship's realising I'm doing this, he's putting some fire on me. I'm going to jump behind him, so he has to rotate his turrets around. And now I'm also going to activate my shield, so I can absorb a little bit more damage as I escape. My teammates are taking him down to very low health. I just need to escape and put some cover between me and him. But at the same time, drawing his fire is really allowing my teammates to do a lot of damage. Now, talking about teammates, teamwork is quite crucial in this game. I found myself in many situations, if I didn't have the backup of my team, or in some cases I wasn't playing with the usual sort of squad, I'd simply be outnumbered, taken out, and obliterated in seconds, just like this artillery cruiser who I found strolling off in the side of the map. I activated my shield, he tried to activate his cloak, but there was no chance that he was going to be escaping me, because I just locked on and took him out. So the crucial part of the teamwork in this game revolves around the healer itself. If the healer is in action, you will keep the Dreadnought. That's going to be a frontline sort of tank, absorb a lot of the damage, give a bit of the damage back, and it'll also help support them destroyers. But if you decide to venture off, or you don't have yourself a healer, like in this case where I take out the healer, 
that ship there, I think it's a destroyer, is going to be at complete disadvantage against two or three other enemy ships. Now moving on a little bit further, the reason I'm playing the Corvette is it feels most like a fighter. I can dive in between these valleys, take out crucial ships and get out of a situation before it gets a little bit too hectic. And as you can see, I'm pursuing this guy through the valley. He's only a tactical cruiser. I hit the wall, bounce off, his missiles are coming everywhere. I use my missile diffuser and escape the situation only down to my teammates being there to back me up. If they weren't there, I would have been in a hell of a lot worse of a situation. So the next thing I want to talk about is the maps themselves. You've got a mixture of both space and planetary based maps. And remember, this is still the early stages, so things are very likely to change. But I really do like how the maps are clustered with lots of cover. And the cover really allows you to do a lot more interesting sort of battles. Standard sort of space battles where there isn't too much cover between them end up in these sort of weird slogging fests between the larger ships. And this really allows the littler ships like the Corvette to actually prevail. And you get in these situations like this where you're pursuing one ship and you're trying to keep one piece of cover between you and another large a ship and you can see here as I'm pursuing this tactical cruiser down here he exposes me tries to drag me in to the fire in line of the Corvette and the Corvette starts to engage me but at the same time I have to push this tactical cruiser under the asteroid itself by chasing him down and I lose line of sight of the other ship and that allows me to take him out it just makes it such more immersive experience I could say where originally in some other games like this there is too much open ground for you to actually cover and a smaller ship is much more vulnerable once again coming up behind taking out the medical ships by the end of this day the medical people must have just absolutely hated me you can see that little symbol that's popped up on him there it's one of his modules and that modules allowed him to self heal his ship but I'm gonna take him out again and it just makes his team so vulnerable at the same time they are just beginning to hate and I make a little mistake here turn myself around and now I'm in a really vulnerable situation with three or four destroyers all targeting me very angrily because I've took out their med ship but luckily I make it away once again cloak up and I'm gonna come back around and take out that ship that was left quite vulnerable now what's great about this is with that med ship out the way you can see just how low the health of some of them crafts is actually getting and this is the perfect sort of prey for the Corvette. I've said that three or four times by now and I just love it. I love preying on these weak ships purely down to that you've taken out their main health, their main healer out of the equation so you can see how vulnerable he is down here. I come back in, finish him off and you're just picking off them ships one by one. And once you've split them up like this, your teammates just have an absolute field day focusing their larger cannons on them. And in this situation, another Corvette comes out from below firing two missiles. I use my missile block and then my beam lasers to take him out. But just look how low my health gets in this situation. I shouldn't have made this out alive. I use my jump to try to force one of the ships into a crossfire. I've not got enough teammates around to really get me out of this situation. The shields are down. I'm onto 1,480 health and it's dropping even more. And due to the amount of cover on the map, it will allow me to actually escape away. The final thing I want to talk about is the modules themselves, how they work and how they feel in response to the game. Now, you've got two offensive modules. In this case, I've got a very basic sort of stealth cloak that I'm using now. And then I've also got the heavy torpedoes that I'm using now as well. And these can be switched out for a number of different cards. So you can customize what your ship's behavior and play style is like quite a lot. You've also got two defensive ones. I've just used one of them, the boost. And now the next thing is you see that little menu pop up there. I've got three options. Now, this is a secondary sort of very interesting mechanic. It allows you to focus the power or a secondary power bar of your ship onto either defensive armament so you get a higher more sort of effective shield or you can focus it on firepower so you do more damage and the final thing you focus on is the actual engines of the ship so you can travel a little bit faster and it does recharge after a bit of time it can also be drained by other ships that possess that power so as i'm chasing in behind this ship i'm looking for an opportunity to use one of them backup powers but i'm not being engaged by their fleet around me here they just seem to have not really notice me at all and they're not doing me enough damage to warrant me using my shield but what you'll see and see here is I put my cloak on and I'm gonna leave the area with a little bit of boost as my shields start to get a little bit lower and by using them in conjunction with your main offensive and defensive modules it allows you to get into some really useful and quite advantageous sort of situations so for instance here I'm being pursued I'm trying to escape I'm gonna put my shield on where I find the right way of going and that's gonna keep my standard sort of health up and it allow me to get behind the rest of these mountains here and get away from that assault ship that is chasing me. Very lucky indeed. I lead it into the rest of my ships. He turns back around 
and now I'm going to be able to activate my shield once again just to get away from that little bit of fire and keep my health up and stay alive. A very useful and quite fun little feature rather than just having them core modules up at the top as well. So now I'm going to turn around, activate my shield and go and hunt that guy down who's tried to pursue me at the same time my health is building back up. So once I figured out how the modules worked on the Corvette, I needed to start planning my attacks and the best way I found out attacking was making sure I always had a way of extracting once I had eliminated my target. So taking out that healer there and then boosting away I found was the most effective way of doing it. Also combining this with a little bit of shields or a bit of extra boost would really allow me to escape a situation very fast without losing any health at all. Perfect. Now the second thing, I talk about this a lot in Airsoft, is about hitting them with the element of surprise. And the Corvette needs that element of surprise or you're going to be dead very quickly. So we've got that ship, we've got the healer eliminated now. We're going to come up from an angle that they won't expect in me using them beam turrets. I'm also waiting for my heavy torpedoes to recharge. Now I'm taking his health down quite quickly, allowing my teammates to focus fire him as well. I'm going to launch them torpedoes and get out of there before he starts focusing on me using that turbo boost once again. And by doing this very erasive sort of tactic, I'm going to cause a lot of damage. Anyway, let's wrap this up. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, but as well at the same time, I would like you to pick the next ship for me to play in another video. I'm definitely going to do a few more videos on this, and I think it'd be quite fun if you guys pick the next ship. So we've got quite a variety to choose from, like I showed you at the beginning. We've got the Destroyers, the Dreadnoughts. I quite fancy having a go at the Dreadnought, but at the same time, I don't know if slogging it off between other ships would be that entertaining. But at the same time, the Artillery Cruiser could be quite interesting, that long-range, accurate sort of sniper.